This is the Trash Fury Q&A video for 250,000 subscribers. Thank you to all that have subscribed so far. And away we go. I think that's what I did on the last, the first one. And then I may have cut it. We'll do it again at the end. If you could listen to five albums for the rest of your life, what five albums would you choose? Well, there's the obvious choices. Um, Hounds of Love by Kate Bush. Disintegration by The Cure. Loveless by My Bloody Valentine. And I guess also Let It Be by The Replacements. And of course, Race Car is Race Car Backwards by Ruben. There you go, there's five. If you could write a 33 and a third book on any album, what would it be? As there's already one on Let It Be by The Replacements and I think Loveless as well. Uh, I think it needs to be Clarity by Jimmy Eat World. Uh, there's a lot of background there, kind of so many layers that you can go into and you know, get to meet the band and they seem like nice guys. Do I think that art should be separate from the artist? We have people like Morrissey and John Lydon. That's the thing with my videos in a way is that I am kind of intrinsically linking, at least to a, to a point, that these songs come from these artists and their lives, their choices, their politics. Personally, I think, yeah, a, a person's personality, their everything is intrinsic in their arts. Obviously with Morrissey and John Lydon, they've kind of swayed away from who they were when they were at their height in the 70s and 80s respectively. So they're kind of not even recognizable. Like one of them is a landlord in America who was on I'm a Celebrity and Morrissey is now a seemingly professional racist. They're, they're not the people who wrote God Save the Queen and How Soon Is Now. It, it's weird. It, it always taints their work. The art comes from these people so they're eternally linked. Has doing these YouTube videos changed the way I approach music? For example, genre styles or artists that I wasn't necessarily into beforehand or giving me a new favorite artist. In a way, like I wasn't that into say Sisters of Mercy or um, the Cocteau Twins before I did videos on them. And kind of that separation between what I knew, which was very little and going into those subjects, I think made the videos richer because of it, because I was coming in it, not from a case of, well, I know this already. So obviously everyone else watching this video knows this as well, which is my mindset in a lot of things. So I guess the videos were a lot more of an introduction to this band because they were for me also the introduction to them. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty much answered really. Uh, what is my opinion on the death of rock music? Uh, do I think it's dead or simply went back to the underground and indie? Well, like, I guess two and a half years ago, three years ago, I did the Smells Like Teen Spirit video, which was, yeah, it's a while ago. At the beginning, I was like, well, rock is dead. And that's kind of been, that, that's just been the critical consensus since, I guess, like 2006, 2007. Rock is dead. No, no, nothing's happening with it. And then kind of recently we, we started getting a bit more rock in the charts. Olivia Rodrigo, as much as she is a pop act, she's using rock techniques on her album and obviously her single Good For You track Brutal has, you know, that really crushing riff throughout that, that is rock music. You know, she's a pop singer, but she's using that style. And if, if that can get into the pop charts, then why can't other more underground rock stuff get in? Like Bring Me The Horizon, as much as people might not like them too much, have kind of been a chart fixture for the last 10 years. They're, they're not going anywhere. Um, so there are pits and pieces of rock in the charts, um, like the Italian Eurovision Act. Like A lot of people are priming them uh, as they did a few years ago for that Led Zeppelin rip-off band. Who was that? Okay, so I just Googled Led Zeppelin rip-off band. And yeah, Greta Van Fleek. There was them a few years ago. They, they were being hyped as the next big thing in rock and that, that went well. It's like any style. It's gonna go, come in and out of style. At the moment, it's having a, a peak. Maybe it'll get better, but maybe it won't. As I showed in the poll I did last week about the number ones on the British charts, that were done by rock bands. There's not many, like uh, people are like, oh, these choices are bad. 
yeah like rock hasn't ever really charted high ever like it, it, it's not a thing it does the people who like rock music will always be there and so rock music will always exist and continue on people like olivia rodrigo are gonna gain it more fans like my generation with avril lavigne they're like ah oh, this is rock music can i get something that's like this but heavier maybe that's gonna happen so rock is not dead which decade would i most like to have been a teenager i'm kind of torn because i kind of want like the late 80s for all the cool alternative bands like dinosaur jr and stuff but obviously that they, they were better in kind of the mid point so let it be and zen arcade and reckoning so i'd kind of want to see them about then when i was like 14 and then obviously be old enough and alive enough to see uh, nirvana breakthrough in the early 90s also the early days of green day and that 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 would be the best time especially for me and you know you watch the channel you know my taste that that is the time what is new british canon and how would i describe it every now and again someone does ask me what is new british canon and to be fair i've only explained it once in the massive attack video about two years ago now but basically in rock criticism there was an accepted list of greatest songs ever. For British music, that is stuff like A Day in the Life, Stairway to Heaven, Bohemian Rhapsody, God Save the Queen, Wonderwall, and Paranoid Android. Obvious, rightly great, but overexposed songs. These songs would be considered British canon. But British music is so much wider and diverse than those songs. And with my channel and new British canon, I want to look into songs that are less well known, but just as musically important. So yeah, that, that is what New British Canon is. Do I enjoy podcasts or other content outlets? Well, I, I quite like streaming. I, I, I watch Netflix a fair bit. But yeah, like for podcasts, I, I don't really listen to them, like, religiously. Uh, every now and again, I'll listen to an episode for research. Um, I think the Husky Do one, like there was a podcast that helped me quite a lot. But yeah, that, that's really my interacting with podcasts. So then, yeah. What are some of the worst songs from my favorite bands? For those in the know, one of my favorite bands is Ruben, a post hardcore band from Surrey. You know, the, the, the output's pretty flawless. But there is one song that I'm like, yeah, I, I can live without. It's not terrible, it's fine. The song is all about control from Very Fast, Very Dangerous. It's just kind of a bit repetitive, lacks substance. Like, it's fine, uh, I'll listen to it. It's not like I'm gonna skip it. If it wasn't there, I probably wouldn't miss it. What genres do I think I'll cover most in the future? Like, probably the overarching, amorphous genre known as alternative and punk. Pretty much, like, that. that is the standard. What's the genre movement that I believe didn't get a fair shake at the time? Maybe because of bad press or being eclipsed by a more exciting movement. Well, I'll, I'll go out on a limb here and say just chart pop. Like, people hate chart pop. They, they think it's, like, the worst thing, has, like, no substance. And they're like, well, you know, th these artists are just figureheads for someone else's music. There, there's still a lot of effort put into these songs. Composers like Max Martin and uh, Jank Antonoff. And even the artists themselves do help a fair bit. In writing lyrics and melodies and the songs themselves and people write them off so easily but yeah like my videos on Spice Girls and Sugar Babes are kind of me trying to be like no 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 like this is just as interesting as any other genre or kind of movement or aspect of pop music everything's pop music chart pop just kind of gets looked down on because it's just so seemingly fabricated but that doesn't mean it's any worse for it it knows what it is what's the trend in modern music that i find to be irritating and what's one i find interesting i quite like uh, how a lot more people are able to make music at home obviously the dri things gonna happen since way back when in the 70s with spiral scratch and everything people just making their own music or releasing it anyway um, but now with Bandcamp and SoundCloud and just everyone who has access to like even a phone or a laptop can make their own music. Makes it so that 
so many people can make music on their own. It's not always good, but you know, everyone has access to this. Like Lil Nas X wouldn't exist if it wasn't for, you know, easy sampling in, yeah, rhythm tracks and SoundCloud. You know, he's one of the biggest pop stars in the world right now. I, I find that incredibly interesting. It's taking away this hierarchy system where if you have money, you can make music or, you know, go on tour or whatever. But no, anyone with like the bare minimum, like a phone, can make music now which is amazing with, with the irritating part like uh, i know i guess the thing is I, I don't necessarily listen to any modern music that i wouldn't feel i like anyway because yeah like I, I don't seek out irritation I, I don't like listen to the radio like boring music is bad but we always get boring music <laughs> i have no answer sorry what was the first album and what was the first artist that i truly fell in love with I guess like the first one I was like obsessed with Sing Sing Death House by uh, The Distillers uh, an album that I played so much uh, I broke it twice on CD like it broke in the disc drive it just shattered because uh, I played it too much in like my Walkman or whatever and yeah like I, I still love the album it's so I, I think it was like the first like punk rock album I owned and it was so short and to the point. Some of the songs were like just over a minute long. And it was so angry and obviously teenager and angst. It, it was so like pivotal to me as I guess a teenager growing up. If I could throw a pie in the face of one musician without repercussions, who would it be? Like throwing a pie in the face is it's not going to change the world. It's going to embarrass them a bit. So the real fucking arseholes, like, you can pie in the face, but that's not really positive action. It's just kind of, they're inconvenienced for a bit. Kind of want someone who's like a bit of a dick rather than a fucking arsehole. Or, you know, just someone that needs to be taken down a couple of pegs. Who's, who's got, got a bit bit too high for their, their boots, their britches. <laughs> What's the idiom? So, I don't know, someone like, um, like uh, Billy Joe Armstrong. You know, he started off at Gilman Street. Now he's like on top of the fucking world with that, you know, Hella Mega Tour. I don't know, man. Last album wasn't very good. Deserves a pie. And me running into the night with no repercussions. Is there any chance of me doing something similar to New British Canon with music from other countries? Um, no. Basically. Every now and again, I'll do an artist from not the UK. Obviously, I've done a couple from Sweden and, you know, a fair few from the US. Uh, as much as I, I do quite enjoy music from other countries, New to British Canon works because I am British. It's m my point of view, uh, as arrogant as that sounds. Because, you know, as much as I'm like, oh man, I really love this band and they never made it out of the UK. I, I don't know about bands from, say, Germany or brazil that are really good but never made it out of the country because they never made it out of the country if i did it it wouldn't be very good so you know if other people wanted to do similar then yeah go ahead more music for more people get get that information out there but yeah it won't be me are there any compilation albums that i hold fondly movie soundtracks etc so there's a fair few like movie soundtracks that I do love, like the Scott Pilgrim one. I think the High Fidelity one's really good. Obviously, Train Spotting. Like, th there's loads of good soundtracks. I guess formative to my my young growing mind and music taste, at least for a bit. There was a I guess it was just a UK uh, release, but maybe it was worldwide. I I don't know. There was a compilation album I got when I was in my early teens called uh, Supercharged. I, I think. I got it because it had Smooth Criminal by Alien Ant Farm on it. It also had like The Rock Show and Fat Lip, like How You Remind Me. It was it was that kind of like new metal pop punk like intersection. It was like 20 tracks and yeah, like I heard Deftones for the first time on on that compilation, Queens of the Stone Age, all for the first time in this compilation. I, I think the thing that was most surprising to me as as a young teen is there were there were swear words 
on the album so often i would have to program the album so it wouldn't play the song with swear words oh you had papa roach between angels and insects as well it was a good song ah oh, man nothing by a it was a good compilation changed my life changed my fucking life so in my videos of course i cite uh our band could be your life by michael azarad probably not in the replacements one but um the fugazi one and the skidoo one what other books do I consider to be essential reading? Like my go-tos that I keep on returning to. Simon Reynolds has done like genre overviews, like par excellence. Rip it up and start again for the post-punk new wave movement is essential reading. I mean, it doesn't go as far in depth as other things do, but you know, it's a good starting point for those genres. I think he also did one on dance culture. It's very good as well. England's Dreaming by John Savage for that whole UK English punk wave from 1977, 76. That's really good. Also, Meet Me in the Bathroom for the 2000s New Rock Revolution, post-punk revival type deal, strokes, yeah, 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 etc. And also uh, Girls at the Front for Riot Girl. Is it over already? Ah, oh, man. Well, I hope you enjoyed our time with us today. I'd like to thank all my subscribers and I'll see you very soon.